Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today, we're going to be converting a bare metal Windows installation to the new way. Uh, so obviously the new way doesn't just work for Hackintosh, it works for any operating system. Uh, so basically you convert your uh, standalone Windows installation from just a desktop or laptop computer uh, onto uh, Proxmox. So it's quite a straightforward process, um, but again you can get into the advanced steps that we will go through in another video. Today, I'm just going to show you how to pass through the current disk that you have in your Windows install uh, to Proxmox. So you can see I'm on Proxmox here, and basically uh, I've just plugged a uh, SATA SSD that's got Windows 11 on it. Uh, just bare bones at the moment, I've got uh, Windows 11 on that. Um, and basically, uh, we're going to sort of convert it to the new way today. So basically, I've got it plugged in through a USB caddy, but you can just obviously plug it in through SATA. Uh, but all you need to do is look at uh, this command that's going to be in the description quite a long command and find your disk so mine's this say to 3120 gig SSD you want to copy it from the dev disk to that number 69 for me there and then if we click copy and then just save that to a notepad somewhere uh, just to make it easier for yourself then you've got a command like this in the description so it's going to use qm set which is a command within the qemu um, data set so basically qemu set um, 108 which is the vmid uh, which we're going to create the virtual machine in a moment sata1 which is sata is the interface and then one is obviously the port the virtual port that it's plugged into and then the dev by uh, id is going to be the actual disk the physical one before we run that uh, basically we're going to need to create a virtual machine for our Windows installation to run on. So we've got to create VM here, give it a name, so I'm just going to call it P2V, physical to virtual, Win11. The OS, I can just click do not use any media because Windows 11 is already installed. And then set the type to Windows 11. Uh, select a few things here, so like a, a EFI disk. TPM storage, etc. Tick QEMU agent because it's good practice for Windows. And then if we uh, look here, we can just uh, disable the disk because we're going to add it later. Then on CPU, give it a meta cause. You can set it as host. I'm going to leave it for now. And then give it a RAM count. I'm just going to leave it at 4 gigabytes. Then for the network device, I'm going to keep it on E1000 and untick firewall. Once done, click next verify all the settings and click finish so it's going to create the virtual machine you can see it's um, currently creating um, and then once it's created uh, all we're going to do is look at hardware you can see that there's no disks there so if you run that command in the description this one enter you can see it says update and then if we go back to hardware it's there now what we're going to do is just do it for SATA to say to for now, um, just because we need to uh, set up the drivers, the virtual drivers, before we do it to SCSI, which SCSI is the best uh, for performance, but we'll do that later in this video. Also, if we go to processes and turn on NUMA, that speeds up the uh, disk speed. If we click on OK, go to options, and then look at the um, boot order. You just want to untick both of them and tick the SATA, click OK. And then if we click start now, we should get booted into our Windows install as if it were on a physical computer. So, you can see, again, the Proxmox, and you can see the Windows 11 loading screen, uh, which is a good sign. Um, sometimes you might get blue screens, uh, but don't worry about that. Uh, you should restart. But you can see, uh, it does the getting devices ready because of the new drivers, if there's any new drivers. But you can see we're in now, and you can see that... Um, basically uh, I'm in and obviously security settings uh, because I'm um, switching computers so called uh, it wants me to create my pin again so I'll do that so I've set my pin and you can see you're on the desktop so this is just bare bones um, Windows installed there's not much fancy with it uh, and if you go to task manager you'll see that it shows up as a virtual disk too uh, you can see the um, but basically, what we're going to do now is install the drivers. So you're going to need something called VertiOrbWin. So if we, um, you go to the link in the description, there's an ISO you download. 
upload that to your ISOs wherever they're stored. I've got mine in my file server. And then just uh, s select that IDE2 drive, choose the storage it's stored on, and then locate your Vertio win. Once done, click OK. Console. And then you can see it's here. If we double click into that, scroll down, Vertio win guest tools. OK, and then just uh, allow that. Uh, do note, these tools only work on uh, Windows 8 and above. Uh, so if you've got like a Windows uh, 7 install, it won't uh, work uh, the tools. Uh, so make sure it's at least Windows 8 or later. But I'm assuming no one is uh, running anything earlier than Windows 10 if they're into computers. So if we click finish, and then uh, once all this is done, uh, we need to shut down Windows, and then we're going to update it to a SCSI drive to make it a bit quicker. Um, so if I shut down Windows now, we can do a few things. So, all I'm going to do is just wait for this to shut down. And then go to hardware. Remove the IDE drive, the DVD drive. We don't need that anymore. And also remove the hard disk. Don't worry, just remove it. We then go back to the shell. Do that command again, but instead of say to one, we do SCSI one. Set that. Go back to our P2V VM. You see it's SCSI 1 there, and then make sure the boot order is um, SCSI 1. Boot up the VM, and it should work just fine uh, with all the new drivers. Then you could just use it like any other. So you can uh, pass through uh, GPU if you wanted to, uh, things like that. Sometimes it may reboot a few times after you've uh, changed it, but, you know, once it's done, it's done. Uh, the next video I'm going to show you how to actually convert it to a virtual disk. So if you look here, if we go to snapshot, it says that the guest config doesn't support taking new snapshots. That's because we've not converted this to a virtual disk. You can back up the VM, uh, but do not. You can back these up, but it won't work as intended. Uh, so we need to convert that to a virtual disk to take advantage of full Proxmox. But again, that'll be another video. See what I mean? You can uh, get a blue screen sometimes, but again, you can just reset. Um, but basically, that's it for this video. If you do have any questions or need any help, please do visit the Discord server linked in the description below. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do leave a like and consider subscribing. Also, if you would like to appreciate our free work, uh, visit below for a donations link. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.